Hey there, it's Professor McDonald. In this video, we're going to confirm that this graph matches this given function. We have f of x equals, in factored form, a rational function, 6 times the fraction with a binomial in the numerator, x minus 1, and in the denominator, two binomials multiplied, x plus 1 quantity times quantity x minus 3. We are going to look for key information that will help us identify if this graph seems right for this function. We're going to look at the y-intercept, the x-intercepts, any holes or vertical asymptotes, the horizontal asymptote, or oblique slanted asymptote. So let's begin by finding the y-intercepts. Now remember, anywhere you go on the y-axis, the x value is going to be zero. So all we need to do to find the y-intercept is to evaluate the function at zero. So we're simply going to plug in zeros everywhere we see an x. Now, this would simplify to negative one in the numerator. There's a six out front. So six times negative one would be negative six in the numerator. And the denominator will have positive 1 times negative 3, so that'll be negative 3. And that all simplifies to a y value of positive 2. So we should have a y-intercept at the point 0 for x and 2 for y. And notice that in our graph, we do see on the y-axis a point that matches those coordinates. Next, we're going to look at the x-intercepts. Now, x-intercepts happen on the x-axis, and anywhere on the x-axis, your y-value will be zero. So what we want to do is set the function equal to zero and solve for x. Now, if the function, the y-value, equals zero, all we need is for the numerator, or even just part of the numerator, to equal zero, and everything else will zero out too. Remember, zero divided by anything, or times anything, is still zero. So the simple way to do this part is to set x minus one equal to zero, and solve for x by adding one to both sides, and we get the point one comma zero as our x-intercept. And notice that on the graph, we see here a point that matches that 1, 0. All right, now let's look for any holes or vertical asymptotes. Now, holes occur where you see factors in the numerator and the denominator cancel out, factors with x in them. And we don't have any identical uh, binomial factors or any any factors with x in them that would cancel out from top and bottom. So there are no holes, okay? So no holes, but wherever the denominator equals zero, we should have a vertical asymptote because whenever your denominator equals zero, that will be undefined. The function will be undefined. So the function cannot be graphed in the areas of x that would make the function undefined. So what we do is we set both of the factors in the denominator equal to zero and solve for x. So we're gonna do that for both of these. So subtracting one from each side on the first equation, we get x equals negative one. So that's a vertical asymptote. And then adding 3 to both sides, we get x equals 3 is also a vertical asymptote of the given function. Now let's see. Do we have lines going through those x values, vertical lines? So where x equals negative 1, that's right about here. And if we draw that vertical line, and also we'll draw one at x equals positive 3, which is right about here. Oh, I lost my line. 
try that again. X equals three, right about here. Okay, so notice when we graph those vertical lines, it does appear that the function is avoiding those electric fences. So my vertical asymptotes are checking out as well. All right, the last thing to inspect is evidence of a horizontal asymptote or a slanted ob oblique asymptote. So if it's a horizontal asymptote, there will not be an oblique asymptote and vice versa. Horizontal asymptotes are pretty easy to look for. If the numerator's degree is lower than the denominator's degree, then the horizontal asymptote will simply be y equals zero. If they are the same in degree, then you would use the lead coefficients to create a fraction, and then you would have a horizontal asymptote at that number. And if the degree of the bottom is one less than the degree of the top, then it will be an oblique slanted asymptote, and you'll have to do division until you find a y equals mx plus b polynomial part of your quotient, ignoring the remainder. Well, this is a case where the degree of the numerator is degree one, and down here we have two factors with x, so the bottom is degree two. Having degree one polynomial in the numerator and degree two um, polynomial in the denominator means that we should have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Now let's see what happens when we draw a horizontal line through y equals zero, which is the x-axis. Okay, so here's my x-axis, and I keep losing my little line here. There we go. All right, so notice that it is okay for the function to cross the horizontal asymptote as it does here in the middle part, but notice that in this part, the function does avoid the x-axis, and in this part, the function avoids the x-axis. So again, we see that it is, we have uh, the horizontal asymptote is matching up with the picture. So these are all good indicators that this is indeed the graph of the given function.